Welcome everyone to this episode of the Inspiration Science. I'm so excited to welcome today a special guest. So it's Shen Tanbia. Really happy to have you here. Um, he's a visionary and entrepreneur and owner of multiple businesses in the self-development area as well as in tech industry. He helps a lot of people, um, early stage entrepreneurs, as well as companies, um, different companies to evolve their ideas, organizations, uh, also with Metaverse and so much more behind that. And I met Shen initially um, through experience online, which was one and a half years ago already. And back then it was crazy. It was also the time when I actually started in coaching and Shen was part of also of my awakening um, with the whole group where I realized my passions. And yeah, and now I'm so happy everything evolved, like the ideas and um, to welcome you, Shen. How are you doing today? Thank you. Thank you. It's beautiful to see your your evolution and, and be on this platform, but I'm doing amazing and I, I really look forward to everything we flow on today. Awesome. Thank you so much for coming. What are you most passionate at this point of your life right now? The word potential comes to mind. Um, potential and truth. I'll say two words. Uh, everyone everyone has a has a potential within them, which is their truth. And, and that potential is untapped. It's limitless. And as I've discovered and continue to discover my own truth and potential, it's it's almost like a blessing and a gift that you can't keep to yourself. You have to give it to everyone and anyone who's ready for it. So those are my two biggest drivers and 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 passions in life is just my own potential and my own truth and and pointing other people to discover that within themselves. I love that. And with what you're doing currently, um, could you share us a little bit more about your background? What are you currently working on, as well as what inspired you to take that path on, on where you're at right now? Yeah, uh, I like how you said background. Um, long story short, when I was growing up, I think I got my first computer when I was five. I was always fascinated with um, technology. I remember at my school, I had the first uh, colored camera phone is old school. <laughs> um, I've always just loved technology. I've loved gaming. I've spent a lot of my times on games, on computers, on playstations, on everything you can imagine. Um, so long story short, right? Growing into adulthood, getting into self-development through the gym. Um, I start, I sort of came to a point in my, my career uh, in engineering, civil engineering, where it didn't feel right. And I could feel another path for me in life. But that path wasn't clear. It's I, I needed to be brought to a point where um, I was suffering a lot in my career and in my job that the suffering was brought me to a point where I was ready to take a risk and ready to jump. So then I started to get into self-development, coaching, personal training, and then starting a couple of online businesses here and there. I'd done the apparel business. I'd done the supplement business. Um, I, I'd done a lot of different businesses, but my first big success in, a, in, the, in the tech industry was 2016 and 17, where I had a, a pair of smart glasses where we programmed some fitness games and we put it out into the market. And that got uh, a multi-million dollar valuation. And that blew my mind because before that, I was playing on the level of, you know, $1,000 here and there, $10,000 here and there, $5,000 here and there. But then to see a simple idea can be worth multiple millions of dollars and not just beyond the money, it can be a solution that can be sent out to the globe and impact many people. I started to realize, okay, there's actually a much bigger potential of what I can do in my life. So now if we come to 2022, I have pretty much three main things I have going on at the moment. My first focus is my my current startup called Experience Online, is which we're, which where we met. Um, when we met, it was quite... Uh, as big as it was then, it's grown into something insane. So when when we caught up maybe a year and a half ago, uh, Experience Online was just a, a self-development app or a meditation app where someone meditates and they would end points. And then those points are going to become tokens in the future, like cryptocurrency tokens. Mm -hmm. Since then, we got to a point of almost launching and we had, as the universe has it, right? S certain interesting people found us, business partners, advisors, and we realized instead of just doing meditation content and self-development content, we can do all content. So, 
if you look at experience online almost like a youtube and a netflix now and every time you watch content most people are mindlessly scrolling on social media uh one of my business partners put it beautiful is is we're taking people from mindlessly scrolling to mindfully scrolling oh, so I as they mindfully that. scroll <laughs> with each scroll and each attention they're putting on our platform they're getting rewarded with their attention and energy and tokens so we've spent a lot of time developing a a system uh you know all of our infrastructure to make this work and experience online is only going to be our first flagship solution we already have a couple of things in the background that's going to come after experience online so wow. that's the main thing i've got going on at the moment um aside from that coaching and developing other people is always part of my passion so my one on one coaching uh business I've more so changed into a, a incubator for other entrepreneurs in their early stages so I can give back my lessons that I'm learning at experience online and and show them that they don't have to play small they can play on the on the biggest stage if they want so that is something I call exploration or exploration.io so that's just a small intimate group where it's almost application only very rarely I'll bring people into that but it's only if they find me and we have that special connection and the final thing i have on the side as well finally how you said um i had a part in your awakening um this other platform i'm a part of and a part business owner of is called my awakening so i actually partnered with one of my very first mentors that got me into um the understanding of the universal laws and energy and and law of attraction um i i went through this process uh with him he started a new program for example um but it was a different program it's not like any other program it was almost the last program you'll ever do which is a pretty big statement <laughs> so wow. i went through it myself as a student uh in in november 2021 and what it awakened in myself which is reflected in experience online and everything i do i knew that i had to be a part of it so funnily enough as much as i felt this crazy sequences and organization happened that um there was an opportunity for me to be uh, a business partner with my own mentor in this and take it from just simple program to its own app its own token its own ecosystem as well so i'm taking a lot of the things i'm learning at experience online and plugging it into there as well so those are sort of the three things experience online exploration and my awakening that i'm currently focusing on Wow, that's so beautiful. I love the idea and it's immense how you guys like evolved within this one one and a half year like when you come together. And as you say, it's it's actually crazy to think about that the, this million dollar billion dollar idea often comes from like from one little thought, imagination, from one thing that is super simple and it creates beyond of things. Um in terms of the awakening, like I like this is something that I've also learned through experience online like sharing our awakening sharing our realizations and I do feel that every single day that I live that I kind of feel that my purpose gets revealed in a deeper sense because it's not just like a one time thing and it can change and it reveals deeper and you realize more and more and then you get awakened and then you feel like oh now I'm awake but then a few weeks later I'm like oh now I'm awake and then it goes on like how is it for you in terms of the awakening do you feel like you have regular awakenings or was this for you more of a thing one big awakening and then that's it or you know could you share a bit more about your awakenings that you had throughout your lives of course i i think you put it put it best um there's a quote from rumi as you as you walk the path the path appears and rumi says it a little bit different so it's like where you're standing you can always only see the next step like this step and next step and you can think what you what step 10 and step 20 and step 30 is going to be but once you take the next step then you see the next step truly so just like what you said is today's truth is almost like tomorrow's illusion i find that the realizations are happening in every moment and it's just reminding yourself that because the moment i find that i've ever thought that i've got it is when i close my eyes to all the the truths that are ready to to hit me and and find me from there onwards so there is there is an absolute truth behind everything but it's like the absolute truth is is slowly giving us a gift in every moment of new realization new realization new realization 
And with those new realizations, there's an opportunity to move with that realization, which leads to the next realization. So I find, as you say best, um, it's like a continual unfolding, even for myself. Yes, I love that. Yeah, it's very true. I feel that with many things, when we take the step, like we see things in a different way. And I've learned like to be kind of more open because we have this one way to go for something. But God has like 10,000 ways that we're like blind of. So it does open. And you mentioned that I know that as well, because we talk about a lot of deep things, the spirituality, the energetics that is so important in business. And mm. there are a lot of business owners out there. They are not really spiritual or they would not consider too much of spirituality in your business. They just like business, business, get their stuff done and that's it. How yeah. do you incorporate spirituality in your business and what does that mean to you in terms of the success that it can add to spirituality? Yeah, yeah, that's a really good question. I feel, because um, I've, I've been that guy, right? Uh, I was the guy where I didn't have time to meditate because I'm busy growing my businesses. I didn't have time for spirituality because I'm being realistic. I've I've been there. And if I bring myself back to that guy, what I couldn't see is I was heavily limited. It sort of felt like um, I was running as fast as I can, but the speed I was moving at was like a walking pace. And no matter what I would do, it's like I'm continually trying to run to the next moment, chasing something. Um, I'm always feeling a, a constant. I used to always feel a constant feeling of um, overwhelm and stress. It's like there's a weight on my shoulders, but I don't even have time to worry about that weight, right? You eventually get to a point. You're, you're either sort of one of three things I find will happen. Either it will be too much for you that you'll slow down and you'll go back to something stable. That's one. Number two, um, you will keep hitting a threshold. You just won't be able to get past this wall and you'll try course after course, program after program until trying, 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 which normally leads you to step number three is where you break. And when you break, your your paradigm breaks, your belief system breaks, your mindset breaks. It's almost like you let go of everything, right? And the moment you let go of everything and you stop running, things you'll find things actually keep moving. And, and if anything, things actually start to move smoother. And then you start to awaken to what is this? Like, how are things still moving without me hustling and grinding? That sort of leads to the path of energy. What is energy? It sort of gives a whole new definition on spirituality. And then it's not like spirituality is a, is a magical thing that we don't have time for. We realize that spirituality is this physical reality itself. Oh, yeah. And it's all intertwined. <laughs> wow, I love it. You know, but I feel like with you, I can have those deep conversation. We do get each other. For some people who are also familiar with it, I guess they can relate in ways. And other people, they would think, what are you guys talking about? But I also think it's kind of a reflection, the spiritual world, what real time like happens and and I think with that it's, it's so important these days to stay awake with so many things happening and also like I think with the spirituality as you say the energetics the soul um what sparks its soul in us I think it does make the impossible happen as you mentioned earlier I know you have a lot of faith and you make things happen if you want to um is there any moment in your life that you could share with us where you thought something was almost impossible but then you did it and if so like how did you how did you do it like what made it possible for you yeah really good question uh i i, I feel my uh i have a very strong mind which is a double-edged sword it's a, it's a positive and a negative because the mind is is limited um the mind is always seeking for information to feel more confident about the path so I remember my dream right at the beginning was uh, how do I get paid and do what I love every day? And I don't know, right? So, and then I asked myself, what do I love? I love going to the gym. I love playing games. And it's like, come on, be realistic. So I've always had this, this inner faith that no matter how unrealistic or impossible something seems, um, I'm always like, ah, oh, I don't know. I guess it will happen if it meant to happen. And, and that little fire has been enough for me to just take the next step, take the next step, take the next step. Mm -hmm. And with every step, don't get me wrong, right? I've doubted myself. I've doubted everything. Like, come on, is this really going to work? And it's almost like the moment I doubt it, I'm like, 
you know who cares who cares if it doesn't work at least i sh- uh, at least i took a shot and it might and it started with the smallest thing let me just send this application for a um to study personal training they probably won't get back to me and then they got back to me instantly and i'm like oh okay let me just uh start this business it's probably nothing's probably going to happen and then something happens oh okay it's like this interesting little fire that i feel not just the one percent have i feel everybody has it but most people are too busy consumed in things whether it's staying busy working or even busy partying or busy alcohol whatever it's just the busyness creates noise where you can't see the inner guidance guiding you to your potential in every moment wow thank you so much like for sharing that you mentioned just like the last point that when we're too busy that we cannot really sometimes see the things in a different lens and also that we tend to go just against the wall in a sense um What do you do when you catch yourself in such situation where you feel like you're in this mode of busy doing the things and, you know, and then how do you get yourself out there or do you just go for it? How, you know, how do you deal with that? Yeah, the, the biggest um, thing to help me see through this is, is I'll share a bit of, of my own awakening uh, recently is, is what, what is an awakening, right? It, it's an awakening to, who you are not, and not who you are, but what you are. So you would think I'm Shint and you're Ozen, right? But who is Shint? Where, where is Shint located? You say, okay, Shint's inside here. So where is the point of Shint? An interesting thing that I sometimes do to see this is right now me and you are looking at each other through a screen, right? And whoever's listening to this is either looking at the phone looking at the video, looking at the audio and using the ears. But if you focus on your eyes for a second, like us two can do this right now, you're looking at the screen through Ozen's eyes. Yes. I'm looking at the screen through Shint's eyes. So who is the one looking through the eyes? And then suddenly you feel space behind the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Big space. Who, who, what, yeah, what is that space? Is if you if you put your attention on the space, you a bit you begin to realize what you are. It, you're not what you seem. It, it nothing is what it seems. The thoughts you have, the doubts you have, that's just that's just commentary of the mind. It's not even you. But until we realize that we are the space behind our mind, that commentary, those thoughts will consume us. We'll identify with each thought that goes across our consciousness. So for me now, any doubts I see going across my consciousness rather than associating that I am the doubt. I am scared. Uh, I don't know if this is going to work. I don't experience it as I. I just see it as something that's going across across almost like a billboard. <laughs> so this way I can explain it. <laughs> That's a great way to illustrate that. But, you know, I love that because it's a very simple yet very deep question. Um, When I ask you right now at this point, who are you? How would you answer that? I am the stillness behind my eyes. Wow, that's a deep one as well, stillness. Do you feel that's something that changes for you, this answer, every time? Or is this something that just kind of more stays? Yeah, it, it stays because still, stillness is absolute. But what changes, so st- the stillness that is absolute is the stillness that remains, I find. The changing is however Shint expresses stillness. You could ask me that same question in six months. I will refer to the same stillness, but my expression of the stillness would be based on whatever expression I have in six months or experience I have in six months. Yes, makes sense. Um, in terms of the, you know, since you're very uh, like conscious about these deep things and spirituality and everything, what do you do when you're making decisions that are not easy? Because as an entrepreneur, all the decisions, even not for non-entrepreneurs, decisions shape our life. And sometimes our mind says something, our heart wants something different, then our intuition screams, this is not it. How do you go about it if you have like really tough decisions to make? Yeah, I find uh, it's it's who is the one making the decision. If you are making the decision or you are making the decision from the mind, there will always be a, a A or B answer that you'll juggle with. Should I do it? Should I not? When should I do it? Right. 
it's it's always heavy if stillness and i'll elaborate if if you are if you are making the decision from stillness you will find yourself saying the decision you will find yourself making the decision as you say it so for you to make that your default there has to be a practice or a prioritization where you focus on stillness where you can tune into that place like right now i'm not thinking about anything that i'm saying i don't have any notes i just jumped straight from another me- meeting into this and i'm just focused on my center point and as i focus on my center point i'm actually quite intrigued of whatever i'm saying right now cuz I, i can almost hear my commentary like oh wow that's a really good answer so <laughs> I stay in that place <laughs> when I make my decisions. And I'll give something a little bit more practical. I was in a meeting before uh and some one guy was mentioning how um uh, he had uh a challenge paying his credit card bill, right? And the first thought he had was like, "Uh-oh, do I have to sell my car?" And he's obviously experiencing that as potentially a bad thing. Mm. My mentor was in that call as well, my business partner, and he said, "You never know." maybe the way is that the car must be sold and you must take public transport for you to meet someone on the bus that's the opportunity it's like we never know the way so we put so much pressure on a decision should i sell my car should i not sell my car i need my car but we don't we can never fathom the true organization of what's happening so with that understanding and focusing on my center point all decisions i generally make in a moment it's just a simple yes or no and then if it happens so be it <laughs> wow that's really beautiful and and you just mentioned as we actually speak out like in this moment this telephone moment it actually comes out because sometimes i catch myself asking someone should i rather do this or this but the underlying tone already knows the answer there's always a side it's like the same when we flip the coin that we secretly wish for it would be a bit more the you know the head or the number side so i think that it is in us and uh yeah you said it really beautifully in terms of the whole ideas that you have because um you also consider yourself as a visionary and we know as an as an entrepreneur it just really goes beyond titles on what we actually do and are but um how do you balance vision between execution because i know a lot of people who are visionary like artists they are really creative but then mm. the execution and then they have like different partners sometimes who kind of balance that and some people they find a different way so how is it for you that you manage to do both love this question i actually glad you asked me uh maybe about a week ago i had a realization that uh vision and visualization is opposite two opposite things that we tend to get mixed up with so a visualization is something you are creating in your mind a vision is something you've received that wasn't created in your mind wow that's a good explanation <laughs> so i've noticed right we visualize so what do we visualize what does our mind create we create our desires to to try and feel happier because we're not happy with this So we all think oh my god yes ferrari okay this is how it would feel penthouse yes penthouse this is my penthouse we're creating desires because we're not at peace with the present moment so when it comes to now you executing to your answer right when it comes to you now executing to get the thing you want you're moving from a place of desire and not wanting this so your execution is poor your motivation is poor your everything is is you have low drive there's no inspiration Mm-hmm. but i find a vision that's given to you it's almost like you see something that you've never thought of and it almost it literally blows your mind you're like wow that's beautiful and it's almost given to you in a way that it pulls you there's no if it there's no desire it's almost like you're you're driven for a vision based on um or like awe like wonder like wow mm-hmm. um a wow is very easy to execute uh i really need this is very hard to execute so i find that's where execution vision and visualization all sort of tie in <laughs> wow that's super powerful i think that's a good way i actually never really thought of this contrast but i think it can be really great it's true a vision is something that you naturally embody and feel pulled to instead of the whole force that you have to do that 
in terms of the whole inspiration, because the whole podcast on my show is called the Inspiration Science, and I will share soon a behind story why it's called like that. But I would love to ask you first a question: Is that inspiration is something that I feel? I mean, it's also an energy, right? Like the frequency, enlightenment, love, gratitude—one of the highest energies that we can be in. Um, and there are people they have this inspirational moment. And then there's also motivation versus inspiration, and then people take action, and then sometimes it just slacks after some time. And other people they take this inspired action continuously. Um, how is it for you? Do you feel like you need constant, in a sense, of new inspiration to keep it going, or is it like you have one big inspiration and it keeps you grounded? Like, how do you see inspiration as part of your life? Beautiful. Uh, firstly, what what is inspiration, right? I love to break down inspiration is spirit in action. What is spirit? Spirit is the stillness behind your eyes. <laughs> so spirit and mind are two different things. Most people, they will get into an inspired state when they get a vision or, they, or their spirit gives them a vision. They become an embodiment of their spirit. So they're like, I, I, feel, I feel so inspired. I'm going to start this. So they're inspired and they start. Spirit is in action. Spirit is moving them. But as the spirit moves them, the mind starts to whisper. The mind's commentary gets louder and louder. I don't know about this. How are you going to do this? Actually, is this the right time? Can you afford this? A bill comes up. Maybe you should focus on this. And then slowly, they're going to fall to the mind. And the louder the mind gets, the, the quieter the spirit gets. And as soon as that balance tips over to the mind's favor, all inspired action stops. So how to stay in a permanent state of inspired action from my experience is you need time in stillness to remind yourself and quieten down the mind so you can align yourself with spirit, which is what you are fundamentally. And then it's an endless source of inspired action. Every day you are one with your spirit and you're the observer of the mind rather than being in the mind, trying to look for the spirit, which is a, an illusion in itself, you know? Wow, that's really beautiful. So with the whole stillness that you mentioned a few times, that is really important um, for someone who has no clue, like how to practice that or how to start that. Um, what would you tell them, like how to get started? Yeah, this is going to be great. Uh, <laughs> this will be the most hardest thing someone ever does in their life, right? Uh, and the most rewarding for that reason. Even five minutes of this will drive the mind insane. And that's the point. If someone sits, it's not a meditation because even a meditation is the mind doing a practice to try reach a point. But the point the mind is trying to reach is yourself. So there's a flaw in that practice, right? Which is interesting. So uh, a, a practice of stillness is to literally sit in silence. You don't even have to close your eyes in the beginning. Just put a put a timer on five minutes, even if you can do five minutes. There's a lot of notifications, by the way. <laughs> if you do just five minute alarm or 10 minute alarm, sit on your bed and just look at a wall and observe. See what the mind says. See the mind's commentary. It will sound something like this in the beginning. Okay, I'm ready. Okay. Stillness. Hmm. What should I think of? No, no, you can't think of it. It's that. Mm -hmm. It will go and then it will start to get louder and louder. How much longer? I'm sure it's been five minutes. Oh man, I need to, I need to scratch my nose. Should I scratch my nose? No, don't scratch your nose. Stillness. <laughs> Once you can see that and it becomes clearer and clearer and clearer, you'll start to separate yourself from it. And eventually in that moment of stillness, if you can start with five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, if you can do an hour and you get to that point, somewhere 30, 45 minutes, you'll reach a point where you almost don't, don't even want to leave. You're not visualizing clouds. You're not visualizing penthouse, Ferrari, fa happy family. You're not creating images in your mind. You have found peace itself. You've found the state behind this whole physical reality. And then when the alarm goes off, you now go through your day and you can live in the place behind the thoughts. But starting in, in a practice for, as, as you asked, Start with 15 minutes, put a timer on 15 minutes, put your phone down, look at a blank wall and watch your thoughts. <laughs> You'd be surprised what you see. 
Wow, I, I have to try this out. I never did that. Like I, I get my ideas different ways, you know, sometimes in front of a computer, sometimes walking somewhere. But I think consciously, like really just sitting, doing nothing. It's yeah, it's something I have to try out. It's a challenge for me. I was on the move and move. I think many entrepreneurs can relate to that with being always restless and doing things. And um, with everything that being said, like shared already so much deepness and wisdom into that um, for all the early stage entrepreneurs starting out between their 20s, 30s, what would you tell them if there was anything that you could tell them who are listening to this um, when it comes to entrepreneurship and business? Good question. I'm actually going to read funny when I wrote this today in my, my Instagram stories, I was like, this is something that I would say to someone that was starting out. Funny you asked me that question. So I'll say this. What you are waiting for before you move is waiting to happen once you move. So we wait for something to happen before we take a jump. But that thing you're waiting for happens when you take the jump. So an early entrepreneur, what, what do you want to be? Okay, you want to you want to start a, a, bi a big business and turn it into an organization, and you know be on a, a table with different shareholders, and um, you're making a whole lot of money, and there's a valuation of a hundred million dollars. Cool. If that's what you want to do, you don't need to first study equity, study shareholdings, start a small company. Just 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 dive right in there. Sit on a table with these guys. Find, find a group of people that share that and just start operating like that. And you're going to find that very soon, it actually becomes that. You're having the conversations, you're in there, you're, you're discovering your insights and everything you're waiting for, you're discovering in the doing of it. So it's like, it comes back to that same thing everyone says, there is no perfect time. You just got to move now. And later in life, maybe 10 years into it, like if you're 20, you'll realize this at 30 or 35, like, man, I was waiting for myself. For 10 years you know um and and that's sometimes a lesson we need to we need to learn in time but any 20 year old is stop stop waiting for yourself it's yourself is waiting for you which is uh, another cryptic wow, i love it <laughs> You know, you always have the words to go to flip and twist the things so deeply around that like the mind is exploding within. But that's amazing. You put it really great together. Now, I know I can go with you so much deeper on each conversation. It's probably going to be a four a five hour podcast if we do that. But to wrap up everything, um, I would love to ask you a bit of a philosophical questions. I love philosophy as well. And it's actually about happiness. So in life, there are only two people that we have to make happy and proud of and it's not our parents so the first person is our 60 year old self and the second person is our 60 year old self and at this point of life what would the six year old child just tell you and what would the 60 years old tell you and it could be really anything so it's a two split questions let's start with the six year old one <laughs> it's funny it's the same it's the same answer for both um I'm proud of you. <laughs> I yeah. love it. I'm proud of you from both of the sides. A hundred percent. Beautiful. If, yeah. If, if we take a step back, right. And why, why was the same question for me? I'll keep this short is, is, is we are all one right behind the, 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 the life force behind my six year old self, the life force behind my 60 year old self, the life force, but behind my 32 year old self, uh, it was always the same life force. Um, so it's the moment I realized I was proud because I'm proud of myself now. So I realized that the six year old self would, would be proud of who I am because I've become who I always wanted to be. And my 60 year old self would be proud of me now because I am anything that he would want to be in his life. So that's where my answer came from. Wow. <laughs> what are you at this point most proud of? Like, there's a lot of things on how you evolve, but is there something particular at this point of life that you're most proud of? Yeah, I would say um, the place I've, the truth I've discovered, I feel people can discover this truth at 11, people can discover this truth at 75, some people may not discover this truth in, their, in this lifetime. Um, so I, I, I don't even know if I can say I'm proud, but I feel privileged um, to, to be brought to a point in my life where I've been given this truth. Um, it's almost like a, I've discovered a place that is untouchable and, 
and that place is actually me uh, who I really am <laughs> yeah I love that Thank you so much for sharing. Well, Shan, thank you so much for coming on my show, um, sharing all your experiences, your valuable wisdom and things. It's always nice. And you're, to me, one of those people who, how can I say that? Like you always have the right words, as I said, to twist things around that makes the mind want to explode. And I think it's so great also for those people who are not really spiritual to to hear that and to dive into that, to be open. And for those who are a bit more conscious to, to further develop that in their career as well. So um, where can people best contact you if they want to reach out to you? Yeah, uh, I'm pretty much on majority of social media, but the most active I am is on Instagram. I guess you can check my, my handle in um, whatever description. Uh, but again, if you're watching this, it's literally my name is the handle. If you search that, you'll find me. And if you find me, you meant to find me. <laughs> awesome. I love that. Yeah, I will put it in the description below. So give Shen a follow, reach out to him, anything when it comes to spirituality, business, um, tech, self-development. And um, again, thank you so much for your time and appreciate all your energy here on the show. Awesome. Thank you, Ozan. Awesome. Okay, beautiful souls, thank you so much for taking time out of your day life to untangle wisdom and abundance on all levels. If you feel connection to this audio experience, share it with your friends, follow us on Instagram, Your Universal Way, and my personal Instagram, Ozinjun, O-C-C-I-N-J-U-N. And always remember, there is no right or wrong way, just your universal way. See you next time.